Joining me now from New York is filmmaker Armie Horowitz. Armie, thank you for joining us. Let's start with the vice presidential debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Walls. I think Walls was absolutely crushed by Vance. He looked uh, scared and stunned the whole time. His eyes looked like he'd just seen a ghost. It looked like a living nightmare for him. But I want to start with this disastrous malfunction by Tim Walls when he was forced to correct the record on whether he was in China for the Tiananmen Square protests. Have a listen to this. Look, I, I will be the first to tell you, I have poured my heart into my community. I've tried to do the best I can, but I've not been perfect. And I'm a knucklehead at times, but it's always been about that. All I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So I was in Hong Kong and China during the democracy protests went in. Army, we know previously in the past he's misspoke about his military history and now he's lied about being in China during the Tiananmen Square protests in 1989. How hopeless is this guy? Yeah, he seems to exaggerate and lie a lot. I'm not sure what we can believe. Was he really born as a small child in Nebraska, they said? I don't know. But his answer was so bizarre. He just went on about his own history in, in the Midwest and then went on to say, well, like, we actually took uh, basketball teams to China and baseball teams and dancers and pickleball players and cornhole, cornhole teams. I mean, what is going on? Look, thankfully for Tim Walz that no one cares about the vice presidential debate. If they did, this would have, would have been a bad situation for Kamala Harris. Um, look, uh, I've got six words for you. Josh Shapiro, Josh Shapiro, Josh Shapiro. Her not picking Josh Shapiro was one of the great, the, the, the governor of Pennsylvania was one of the great unforced errors that I remember in political history. Look, let's run through some numbers. I know I promised you there'd be no math in this test, but just bear with me for a moment, okay? Mm. There are 7 million people voted in Pennsylvania in the 2020 election, okay? Right now, Trump is up according to the real clear politics average of polls, by 0.1%. That means he's up by about 70,000 votes in the entire... And, all, and the, the, really, at the end of the day, the race is going to come down to Pennsylvania. Everyone thinks so. And yet you didn't choose the most popular politician in Pennsylvania at a 60% approval rating who's more popular than Kamala Harris and Trump and anyone else there. Look, that's what it comes down to. And she failed to do so. They had one job in this debate, which was to, to actually make good on what they've been saying on the campaign trail about J.D. Vance, that he's weird, that he is radical. They didn't do that. J.D. Vance, and I disagree with J.D. Vance on a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but he came across as cool, calm, and collected had a command of the issues on a granular level to the point where actually Donald Trump doesn't have. And I think from that perspective, they simply failed. No, look, I agree. I thought J.D. Vance was so impressive and I even thought that, you know, one day he, he could make a very good president. Have a listen to him demolishing the CBS moderators for lying to the audience. Just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio, does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status, right. temporary protected status. Well, Mar 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 Nora, but, but thank you. No, Senator, we have no, no, so course. much to get to. Mar Margaret, you, I, I think Nora. it's important we're because... We're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you. Margaret, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact-check. And since you're fact-checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP-1 app, where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole, and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our you, own Senator, leadership. Thank you, Senator, for describing the legal and, process. Army um, CBS muted him at the end, but Vance is on fire. I've got to ask you, how weak are these liberal media networks? They did the exact same thing to Donald Trump in the presidential debate. Yeah, he did a great job calling out the moderators because, um, again, he has a real command of facts. Unfortunately, that when they when they do fact check Trump, uh, Trump doesn't have the same ability and command the issues to really turn it around on the moderators. 
like Vance did. Because what they did right there, they take one fact and they twist it and contort it to make their point. But in reality, all it's doing is 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 essentially hiding what Vance was able to uncover. And I don't think they realized he was going to do that. Look, the, the larger problem, the systematic problem we have these debates is that they're run by the media. And a, a, a study was done by Syracuse University, which showed that only 3.4% of all American people in the media, all American media personalities, are Republican. So it's a, it's a, it's a systemic problem that we have in the debates because they're run by the mainstream media, which are, in fact, mostly Democrats. Yeah, and that's very, very clear. Now, let's turn to the situation in the Middle East. US President Joe Biden is calling for a ceasefire after Iran pummeled Israel with missiles and then, of course, Israel announced a ground invasion in Lebanon. Army Iran has launched, well, around about 180 ballistic missiles at Israel now. And now Joe Biden wants a ceasefire. Yeah, um, it's, it's really incredible. Why? 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 Right? I mean, you have to understand, okay, he's calling for a ceasefire. So really there's only one of two options here. Uh, either he's asking for a ceasefire because he has an amoral policy of moral relativism. That is to say that you have two sides on the same moral level fighting. So therefore call a ceasefire because neither one is in the right. Um, or he's making a very cold, hard political calculation, which is the reason why he was pro-Israel initially after October 7th, and then threw Israel under the bus and backed the bus over them because he wants votes in Georgia and Michigan. I mean, just recently, Elise Slotkin, who's running for the Senate, uh, who's the Democratic nominee in Michigan, revealed something, and she said that in their own internal polling, that actually Trump is up slightly in Michigan. So could that be the reason? Look, either way, it's awful. Um, but at the end of the day, he's calling for a ceasefire after Lebanon. And I say Lebanon because, and not Hezbollah, because Hezbollah has 62 seats in the, in the Lebanese parliament, and the anti-Hezbollah uh, coalition has 37. They, they essentially control the parliament and the government. So Lebanon slash Hezbollah has, been, has had an ongoing assault on Israel for the last year. They have rained down, and understand this, 10,000 rockets on the state of Israel, and Israel's had to evacuate nearly 100,000 people. I don't want to let that number just go unnoticed. Ten, Because we get we get lost in thousands here, thousands here, all of a sudden we're talking about real numbers. 10,000 rockets, okay, falling on the state of Israel is a, can you imagine if that was going on in Melbourne or in Sydney or New York? I mean, mm. the entire country of Australia is much larger than the state of Israel, but that's what they had to endure, right? Now, we had Iran attacking because Iran has been emboldened by that. When they only hear hollow words and no backup, what do you think that's going to have them do? They're going to press what they think to be their advantage. So they saw that, the, that, that after Israel was trying to defend itself, they saw the president actually going after Israel, like, well, this is our moment to rain ballistic missiles across Israel. Let's not forget, they did this also in April, where they sent 300 drones and rockets and missiles on Israel. And what was the response the administration? Not against Iran. I mean, it was against Iran. They did skip some hollow words to Iran. But the real powerful world, when they went to the state of Israel and said, do not escalate this or you'll lose our support. Do you understand what is going on here? How amoral, if not immoral, this policy is? And by the way, can we also not forget, how do we, how do we lose this factoid? Iran is trying to assassinate Donald Trump in our country. I mean, where's that response? I don't get it. That's a really, really good point. And you've got Joe Biden. I mean, this was his previous warning to Hezbollah. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran. Don't. And then uh, Kamala Harris gave it a go. What's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. Army, I mean, clearly Hezbollah was not exactly shaking in its boots with the warnings from the Biden administration. Don't what? Don't what? I mean, guys, I, I, are you guys for real? Like, are, really, are we supposed to take this foreign policy seriously? I mean, look, I, I love the fact 
that they have been pushing this narrative, by the way, in, this, in, the, in the VP debate, Tim Walz did this, and they do this on the campaign trail. The chaos of Donald Trump, the chaos he's going to have around the world. Have you looked at what's going on around the world? Because I, I, look, I'm old enough to remember what it was like with Trump as president, and I don't remember Ukraine being invaded. In fact, I saw Ukraine being invaded under the Obama administration, and then Biden, but not during Trump, or Lebanon, or Iran, or Gaza, or Yemen. I mean, I can go Afghanistan, I can go on and on. This is all happening, am I crazy? I'm sorry, am I going crazy? This is all happening under the Biden administration. Who's the chaos agent? Uh, yeah, I think there's a common denominator because, I mean, look, the US has to play a role in this. We know that the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, actually signed off on the Biden-Harris decision to release billions in frozen funds directly to Iran. And look at this. He was asked about this, about whether that money was actually being used for terror. Look what he said. Iran has unfortunately always used and focused its funds on supporting terrorism, on supporting groups like, uh, like Hamas. Uh, and it's done that when there have been sanctions. It's done that when there haven't been sanctions. And it's always prioritised that. I mean, what a bizarre response. What role has this funding played in this whole saga? I mean, it's... I mean, come on. <laughs> They're funding the terrorism. I mean, duh, Blinken. Yes. So if you believe that, can you explain to me why six weeks after three American soldiers were killed by a drone attack by Iran-backed proxy, we then released frozen assets of $10 billion? Not, by the way, that's not counting allowing China to buy their oil, which is billions and billions more. That's what's funding all of this. I mean, are you guys crazy or are we the crazy one? Am I taking crazy pills here? <laughs> I mean, look. Um, I remember when they first began to unfreeze the assets, and the journalists, in fact, like the journalist you just saw on NBC asking Blinken, did, good for them, ask about the fungibility of money. And they looked at all of these journalists as if they didn't know what they were talking about. What's the fungibility? They had no basic concept of economics and how money works. People sitting on their kitchen table understand what the fungibility of money means in America or anywhere else in the world. But these politicians don't? Give me a break. Uh, yes, I don't think you're the one going crazy here, Army. I think that the US has a lot to answer for. Have a look as well at this disgraceful commentary on the BBC. It was allowed to be peddled uh, on Britain's public broadcaster in relation to Iran's attack on Israel. I think the international community has to make sure that whatever Israel does is not upending the regional order as we know it. And the U.S. has a responsibility. So we've been in this cause for 12 months now of constantly red lines being crossed, mostly by the Israelis. Um, the Hezbollah and Iran have played it fairly rationally, trying to always try to be you know, very cautious in how they respond, uh, trying to leave off-rams where they could. The Netanyahu government has kind of lost the opportunity at every sort of junction to use an off ramp that was given to them. I mean, I'm not sure how any uh, terrorism or any terror group can, is, is rational uh, in its approach to a war. How much has the BBC in particular declined since this Middle East conflict began? Oh, no, it ha you're wrong. It hasn't declined. It's been the gutter the entire time. Are you kidding me? The BBC has always been awful. Look, I... I'm, it's, I love when my friend, my Democratic friends, my, my liberal friends, they say to me, oh, God, we hate American media. We wish we had the BBC in America. Are you, are you kidding me? As much as I dislike American media, they have the highest fundamental love of the fidelity of, of journalistic ethics compared to the BBC. The BBC is garbage and trash, and it always has been. Let's not forget that the BBC just recently, in fact, I'm, I'm shocked they even had to do this. I guess they were forced to by the government. They had to have a study about the endemic anti-Semitism they had that was rife throughout the BBC. They had to fire people because of it. Uh, the BBC just recently, there was a documentary about the Nova Music Festival and the massacre that happened there. The director was told by the BBC that if he didn't, if he took out the reference to Hamas as a terrorist organization, if he didn't take it out, they would not broadcast this documentary about the massacre. That's how horrific the BBC has been.
Yeah, completely agree. You're right. They've always been uh, in the gutter, as you said. Now, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has condemned Hamas for not allowing the International Committee of the Red Cross to visit the hostages in Gaza. I mean, it's only taken him 12 months after the fact, which is extraordinary. But then today he tweets, I condemn the broadening of the Middle East conflict with escalation after escalation. This must stop. We absolutely need a ceasefire. Army, the UN is a disgrace, isn't it? Oh, stop. Yes, of course it is. God, it is. Look, I did an entire documentary about the UN. I spent, unfortunately, four years of my life I'll never get back traveling around the world showing how horrific the United Nations is. But about this conflict in particular, um, look, uh, UNRWA is the UN Relief and Work Agency, is an organization that, and I can go on and on about how terrible they are, about why they have changed their numbers to increase the number of Palestinian refugees um, just so they could use that as a cudgel against Israel. But aside from that, uh, UNRWA is a part of Hamas. They are engaged with Hamas. They have assisted Hamas. So now you're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take from the head of the UN anything from what he says and says it should be applied to anything? I don't think so. And by the way, you want a disaster with how this might end up in Lebanon? If we go back to what happened the first time Israel invaded Lebanon because it was being bombed, this is not the first time this has happened, of course. This movie has been shown before. Uh, and if we're going to have UNIFIL again be at the border, will they allow Hezbollah terrorists to continue to bomb Israel? And then because UNIFIL is there, Israel cannot respond? If that's where we're heading, like we were last time, this is going to be another disaster. Yeah, it's certainly uh, heading in that direction. Army Horowitz, you're spot on as always. Thank you very much for joining us on the show this evening.